you kind of touched on the HSD. Yeah. A uh, bit of a hot button issue. Uh, hydro and uh, also this remembers a the HSD on Hopkins that was hurting the, uh, hurting the legions. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Uh, every time people turn around, their, their pocketbooks are being uh, picked uh, by the government. Uh, the HST, uh, hydro rates uh, going up, uh, auto insurance, uh, and then the eco tax in summer. Whether I'm hearing Cornwall back when Niagara, I'm just hearing families saying they're not busy enough. They need a break. The little survey that they want to get to the kids. Pardon me? Oh, in Ottawa? The one of the Ottawa School Board? Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, you know, as a dad, uh, a young girl had this conversation with my daughter when she's a bit older. It's something that's important for families to have. Uh, you know, I just don't uh, see where questions around uh, uh, sexual orientation or other issues uh, have much to do with classroom education. Uh, I agree with parents and students who are expressing concern uh, about this survey. Do you think it's the job of school boards to be asking questions like that? I, I just don't see what it has to do with quality of education in the classroom. When, when I'm talking to moms and dads across the province, uh, when it comes to our schools, they're concerned about making sure the kids have the best education, good math skills, good language skills, a chance to go into trades uh, if they like. Um, I just think that this is not reflective of the priorities of the vast majority of parents. One of your members, Lisa McLeod, is proposing a private member's bill to make Remembrance Day a staff holiday, but you'd have to sacrifice Family Day under her proposal. Uh, the whole idea of Family Day was to give somebody a holiday between New Year's and Easter. I, why do you think you need to sacrifice Family Day in order to give Remembrance Day as a holiday? Well, first uh, I want to um, uh, commend Lisa McLeod for bringing initiatives uh, like this forward. She's somebody who cares very deeply about our veterans, uh, very active with the legions in her area. And she's brought forward this bill, I think, at, a, at an important time. So all of us will be back in our ridings for Remembrance Day ceremonies to hear directly from uh, veterans. Uh, and their family members about what they think about her, uh, her proposal. Um, it is a private member's bill to go through the House for debate, but I think uh, Lisa wants to uh, do what she can to make sure that uh, our veterans and the sacrifices uh, of those that have lost uh, overseas will always be removed. But uh, why the clause to remove family day? Can we have both? Well, you know, again, this is uh, uh, Lisa's bill that she's brought forward a private member's uh, bill. Uh, members will have a chance to debate that uh, in the time going forward. But the bottom line um, for Lisa is she's looking for the best way to make sure that we continue to recognize the sacrifice that our veterans have made uh, and also the uh, outstanding and courageous work of our the women and men in the armed forces in Afghanistan and overseas today. Question there? Um, I was just wondering, a lot of our community is actually saying that seniors are having a problem with heating and uh, with HST on our heat and everything, how are you going to help the seniors pay for the heat? Their pension plans aren't getting any higher. It is awfully difficult for anybody to make ends meet with all the increase in costs and higher taxes, but particularly seniors on fixed incomes. Um, we're treading water just to make ends meet, and too many are falling behind. We've brought forward a, a survey called HaveYourSayOntario.ca. There's a number of ideas for tax relief, and we want to hear from seniors and moms and dads and students on the best way to do that. Some ideas that we've talked about uh, taking the HST off of heat, off of hydro, uh, off of gasoline, lowering the rate of the HST, or income taxes of property tax uh, reductions. Basically all options are on the table. And we want to hear from families through Ontario, sorry, have your say Ontario.ca about the best way of doing that. Actually, uh, I got one of your surveys back from one of the people in the community and she yep. said she was angry because she actually filled out the service, uh, survey before and uh, she didn't. She actually called and didn't get a phone call back. And what do you have to say about that? Well, we're still compiling the surveys and we just launched it a couple of weeks ago and uh, already we had over 2,000 people uh, visit the website. We do plan on responding to those who fill out the survey. Uh, we're just now gathering information. And we'll continue to do this as we go forward towards the October 2011 election. But here's the bottom line of what will be in our platform. One, a break for ordinary hardworking families so they can spend their money on their own priorities, not Dalton McGinty's. Uh, second, making sure the government works for the people who pay the bills to focus on programs people care about and need like frontline health care and cut out the McGinty waste. And third, 
more jobs, better jobs to give greater opportunities to families to find good work with others. Tim, the, the, United, the United Counties is turning up the heat on the McGinty government over the farm and forest tax rebate programs. They say essentially the programs they don't have a problem with, they have a problem with the funding formula. They say it's flawed that they got, they lost $8.1 million in tax assessment this year, but they only got a check from the McGinty government for $362,000. Um, what do you think is the solution to this problem? Well, um, it's actually presented tonight with a document from the uh, East Ontario Wardens Caucus. They always do a great job. They do their research. They know their stuff. And I'll look forward to talking to them about this issue and municipal financing in general. Um, but let me give you another example. I mean, families uh, uh, in the counties pay the same gas tax as those that do uh, in the City of Toronto or the City of Ottawa, but they're not getting back any funding to support roads and bridges, which are the public transit uh, in uh, rural Ontario, and I've said as Premier uh, that I would make sure we have a program to address that need. Same thing in my riding, we don't have public transit, and we're not getting any money back from the gas tax from the Guinty government. Do you think there's a problem with the OMPF funding formula? Uh, I think it's always important to uh, look at these formulas to make sure they treat uh, communities uh, fairly. So, you know, Ontario is a big province. We have small towns, we have big cities, we have rural and northern Ontario. I think it's always important to stay on top of these programs and make sure they adequately address the needs of the different communities we have. And I think people like the wardens of uh, eastern Ontario always give good advice on how to do that. Just a quick follow-up. Would you give